Um, the ministers come to actually uh, rebut your statement that nothing of sort happened. Take us through what really the situation was. Uh, okay, so I'm in Lagos for a, a program, okay. and then uh, yesterday at night I got texts from my sister, a message saying that, oh my goodness, they almost were victims. Um, so she sent me the message. So I called her and I asked what happened. So on that train, I had my sister, my brother, and my, my sister-in-law were there. So they went with the, uh, the last train, and of course in the last few weeks we have had a, a, a series of attacks on the road. Yes. So when you get to the Rigasta station, there are two ways to leave that place. You either go through Rigasta or you go through Mando together. And that Mando road in the last few weeks has repeatedly been under attack. So when that happened, my sister went off in her own vehicle, then my brother and his wife, uh, they decided to first of all follow that route. And they were quite happy say the that the minister was there yeah. and then with the security and they were blowing siren and everything and so when they went, went off the entire direction they also quickly were following to go through and be able to use that cover of the siren and then the next thing of course the ministers they seem the gunshots were heard according to them and they were like oh some puto some puto mini oh they are out they are out and then that convoy came on and they came back and they scattered they fled you okay, know the criminals me, were saying some puto no the, the people the around people mentioned yeah we them. mentioned the some puto meaning the criminals have uh, come, have come out, the out. bandits are out. And so the cars were, fl uh, you know, they were fleeing. You know, there's this, uh, what do you call it, this road, uh, this divide, the road of separator that you have. Okay. Some of these cars, according to my brother, were climbing it and just going away. And they all had to leave. And uh, it's, it's, for me, I find it quite, it's, it's, it's not surprising that there is denial because that is what has consistently gone. You know, the thing that pains me the most, by the time I called my, uh, my sister-in-law that yesterday night around 10, when after I'd left a, a, a cocktail, when I called her, she was so she was like, "Oh, okay. Now that we have a minister, and he has actually witnessed what citizens go through, something will be done about it." For you to wake up this morning and see a minister lying about the issue, nobody is saying that your your car was shot uh, was shot at because it was if it was you wouldn't be able to deny it. But there was an attack. Why are they denying this? This was the same thing they did with Abuja Kaduna Road, where we kept saying there are attacks on Doha Road. Citizens were crying out. They kept denying denying it. The same thing with insurgency uh, the, in the Northeast. And today, here we are, being at the mercy of these bandits, these terrorists, who every time they, our government denies this an attack, empowers them and makes our lives not to be of any value. And it needs to stop. The government needs to understand that the, this war against uh, insecurity, against insurgency, is not going to be won by lies and propaganda.